Okay. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm Yuris Fuentes. Um, I'm with DuPont. And I want to tell you about what we do with operator training simulators at DuPont. Um, we've been doing this for a while, I think from the late 80s, early 90s. Um, a lot of things have changed since then. Uh, computers got faster. Um, the vendors also have provided easier ways to communicate with DCSs. Um, the simulation software itself has gotten better. And, um, and then going back to the vendors, they also have been getting more and more involved in this business of um, trying to build uh, simulators. Um, did I kill it? No. Try again. Oh, there. <laughs> uh, a little bit about me. I'm, I'm a chemical engineer. I'm in the process dynamics, uh, process control dynamics and analysis group at uh, DuPont. Um, I've been there for almost 25 years, uh, all this time doing some kind of mathematical modeling or computational modeling or numerical modeling, you name it, it's been there. Uh, and uh, for the last, I would say like 12 years, I've been involved more in process uh, simulation, process modeling. And um, that's where the last item there, I'm part of the team that supports the simulation software that we used at DuPont. It's an in-house uh, dynamic simulator. So this is what I'll be talking about. Um, why would you want to use an OTS in the first place? Um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, virtual plants, which is the heart of the OTS. And then I'll tell you about the two types of OTSs that we have at DuPont, the one we call the DCS connected one and what we call the standalone OTS. And as soon as you bring these two, somebody wants to know, what the you know how they compare, so I'll talk about uh, the inevitable comparison. And I'll wrap up things with a little bit more about the role of the virtual plant in the whole process. So why would you want to use an OTS? Um, I guess the bottom line is that it provides a very uh, hands-on training. It's better than just reading manuals. It's going to be better than just having people watch videos or uh, classroom training, even shadowing, because um, there's, you know, sometimes people just sit next to operators and kind of learn the ropes. But when you do it that way, you know, you end up learning how to run the plant when everything is fine. You typically don't, well, I mean, just to get lucky, quotes, you won't see much of a, anything too exciting. Um, it's a safe and reliable training environment. And of course, there's a bunch of benefits, um, improving response in, on startups, especially, which is something critical for chemical processes, profitability, uptime. I personally think that one of the benefits of just having the system around is that people don't realize that once you have that, it, it, it's like having a toy. It's like having a flight simulator of your plant. And you can do much more than just train. You can just kind of explore what happens with your plant when you go into, you know, areas that you wouldn't do in a normal one just because of those safety concerns or something like that. So um, at the heart of an OTS is the dynamic model of the plant. Um, here, what we do at DuPont, at least we go with first principles models. We do all the mass and energy balances, the thermodynamics, um, particle size distributions if it's needed, the pH if it's needed, of all the phase equilibrium. Everything is in there. Um, and that's represented by the gray area in the, that gray in the diagram. And on top of that, in the software, we will put the regulatory control that is needed to run the plant, any batch or any sequences that may be needed. And of course, the software has its own HMI. In a sense, at this point, you already have a training system. But the problem is that the, the HMI, the native HMI, may not look anything like what the uh, the DCS has, so people will probably just stop here and say, no, that's not an OTS yet. But if you want to teach concepts at this point, you already uh, have the tool that you need. Um, like I said earlier, I think we think of this as a flight simulator for a chemical process. Um, and in DuPont, we use these virtual plants, or digital twins, like some people call them, <laughs> um, for much more than OTSs. Um, there's, there's a talk that I've given somewhere else where we go through the whole process, uh, project life cycle, and we tell you where a virtual plant fits in each step of the way. And operator training happens to be one of them, and it's the subject that we'll cover today, but 
it's important to realize that having a model opens a lot of doors. Um, so the first type is what we call the DCS connected type. And in this case, is, this is the case where you actually have a DCS. The vendor has provided a DCS. You have the hardware. You have the software. It may be virtual. It may be real. And now, the model that I showed you earlier, everything is basically turned off. It becomes an actual virtual plant. It doesn't need the regulatory control. It doesn't need the HMI. It doesn't need any logic, because now the DCS is doing all the work. And the virtual plant is exactly just that. It's just a model that runs and provides the data to the DCS. Uh, let me see if this works here. And the DCS sends the commands back to the, to the virtual plant. And as far as the operator is concerned, looking at the HMI, they think they're running the plant, or you could think that you're running the plant. So when you're doing it this way, you actually, ah, sorry. Um, because you have the DCS of the, 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 the distributed control system here, you're using the actual HMI. Of course, everything is done by the DCS. Um, so you're essentially, you're running the plant on the real thing. Um, we have an alternative. <laughs> and that's the standalone, which is this one. And what happens with what we do here is we do everything in the same software, the same software that runs the, the virtual plant. Um, again, does um, all the logic and regulatory control. It, we have to add all the, uh, oops. <laughs> we have to add all the alarms and interlocks because this is something that normally the DCS would do. And, and this is the tricky part, we have an emulated HMI. We, we can't really give you the real HMI because that's proprietary, you know, we would, <laughs> we would be, uh, you know, we don't want to take over uh, Honeywell or Siemens uh, HMI. So we will give you something that looks like the DCS windows. Typically what we end up doing is we ask the user to give us um, like a screenshot of what their, you know, what their screens look like. And we'll kind of clean them up and have our software or the virtual plant basically populate uh, the data from the model. So if you look at the screen, you know, it looks like a screen of an HMI, of a DCS, but it's not the real thing. But it's good enough. The faceplates are not exactly the faceplates of uh, the real thing, but there are faceplates, so the functionality is there. Some people complain about that. They say, no, it's not exactly the same thing. But typically, within a week, they realize that what they're doing there is learning how to run the process, and it's not critical that they, you know, the HMI is not exactly like the other one. It doesn't matter, because what you want to do is learn how to run the process. And they eventually say, OK, we can, we can do it this way. Um, so those are the two types of um, training systems that we have. Um, in this case, of course, the native HMI is not used at all, so we can hide it. Um, so obviously, you want to compare them. Um, the good things about having a DCS connected one, of course, is that you have the real thing. You have the real HMI. And because of that, you are getting the bonus training of people how to use the DCS. <laughs> so if you want to, somebody to learn how to use the CMERS or Honeywell or ABB system, if you have a connected one, you have the system. You, you can learn you know, how to navigate, whatever. So that's nice. Um, and with it, it will come with all the tools that the DCS may have. We, we, you know, we won't be replicating all the tools. Now, on the cons, we have, of course, the costs. Now you have a DCS. You need a, either an extra DCS or whatever. So you need, there will be hardware costs. There will be licensing costs. And the last one is not sort of depending on whether it's real or virtual. Typically, you run in real time. If you're using a standalone system, uh, the, the software is cheaper. Actually, within DuPont, it's free. So, um, it's portable. Uh, you could be running this thing on, on, the, on, you know, on the flight here if you want. You can be running your plan. Um, it supports the classroom setting. You can have a, the concept of having um, an instructor with a, with a screen in the, in the front of the, of the room and all the students, each one with their own plant or running their own plant and then having the instructor drop scenarios on them stop, you know, start leaks here or stop pumps there and let the students figure out what the heck's going on. And you can do it. They don't have, all have to be looking at the same problem. Uh, 
And of course, because it's, it's now you're not tied to the DCS, you could typically run faster than real time, which is, can be nice. Now, on the cons, we have this business of the emulation. So right now, you don't get exactly the HMI. It's something that looks like the HMI. Um, there's some cost to develop that. Somebody has to take the time to turn those screenshots into something that lo looks like the HMI. And there's also um, the cost of uh, mi migrating, if you want to, if you want to call it something, the interlocks and alarms that are normally in the DCS, and now they have to be emulated in the or replicated in the in the uh, virtual plant. Um, we do both. Sometimes, if people are interested, not just in training, but also, for example, using the model to, to do a factory acceptance test and things like that, then you have to do it connected because you need to use the real thing. Sometimes, if it's something that, um, that you want to take like a classroom setting, then, of course, the standalone is it's easier to, to do. You don't need a, to carry DCS with you <laughs> or a bunch of DCSs with you. Um, independent of whether you go standalone or connected, you need the virtual plant. And there's a cost associated to the virtual plant. So depending on how much data you have, how complex the process may be, the accuracy or the fidelity that you brought up earlier, depending on, on all those factors, developing a model can be something from uh, a couple of weeks to a couple of months. So it could be, it could be a significant effort depending on what you're looking for. But the key for us, at least at DuPont, is the last line. Um, what, helps, what helps you with this, if there's a significant cost, is the, the fact that you could use this model for more than just training. So if you have, if you just come and think, oh, all I, all, all I want to do is train, uh, you know, and it becomes an issue of costs, then you can say, what other things can I get from the model? And just from the last two items, if you already have it, you can use the model later, for example, to test new control strategies or uh, test alarms or anything, because by now the model is already in place. So you can take advantage of the fact that you have it and you can create you know, uh, basically a sandbox to test things before you do them in the real system. At the point we've done all of these, as I said earlier, I have to admit we have not had one model that has been used for all for all items. We've come close. We've, we've had one model that went all the way from the first item down to operator training. Um, and that's, that's the stuff. What happens is a lot of people, once the plant starts, you know, <laughs> they just leave the model aside. We don't need it anymore. And they stop caring about it, not updating it. And when you do that, you lose the benefit of the last point. But I think that's the, that's the bottom line. If you have an operator training system, you have much more than just an operator training system. There's a significant tool that you can use for other aspects of, uh, of running your chemical process. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So anyway, I'll answer questions. <laughs>